fluids are the bane of most satisfactory players' existences. On paper, things work just fine, but in practice they never seem to behave how you expect. That's because fluids have certain physics applied to them and it's not always clear what the rules are. In fact, it's a strange and unique aspect of this game that is incredibly complex and comes with zero in-game explanation. This lack of understanding has led many satisfactory players to assume that Mark II pipes specifically are bugged. But allegedly, they are working as intended, it's just not obvious how we're supposed to interact with them. Hey everyone, welcome to Satisfactory News. In this video, I'm going to go into the finer points of fluids and how to have a problem-free factory. So if you've been struggling with your fluids, settle in. I want to thank a couple of valuable resources for getting some of the facts straight here. Firstly, McGallion in their document, The Fix-It Inc. Plumbing Manual, A Guide to Pipelines, and I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this username, B. De Guigne for their Reddit post, I spent the weekend troubleshooting fluids and here's what I learned. Both resources helped me word these tips properly and in a way that is hopefully accurate and made sure that I didn't miss anything important. Let fluids flow down. So, since we know that physics apply to liquids, it shouldn't be any surprise that they work best when you let gravity do the hard work for you. So when building pipes, try to place them above the input of the machine so that the fluids can essentially fall right in. Don't make them fight against gravity. If you're sending fluids any higher than 10 meters up, you will need a pump. When possible, try to avoid having to go up, but I know sometimes it just can't be avoided. But not having to deal with head lift definitely makes things a lot easier, but we're gonna go more into head lift and pumps a little bit later. Another related quirk of pipes is that they will always flow from an area of high pressure to low pressure. In game terms, this essentially means that fluid will move from a full pipe to a less full pipe, naturally. Fluids also may not move at full speed unless the pipeline is full. In other words, full pipes are good. Sloshing. There are many words to describe this phenomenon, but essentially fluids slosh around in the pipes. When this happens, a pipe that on paper is fully saturated somehow suddenly won't have enough throughput. This is because pipes have a hard maximum flow rate of 600, and machines don't consume fluids at a constant rate. They demand a certain amount all at once, at certain intervals, and depending on the timing and any other issues that cause a variance in production, the demand of your machines can temporarily change. And because the pipes can never carry over 600 per minute, the average flow rate drops, and then so does your production, and then your pipe can never have 600 per minute. So do yourself a favor and create some extra capacity for your pipes to essentially overflow into. One method is to add a fluid buffer just before a pipe manifold. But the agreed upon best solution is what is essentially a loopback pipe. This pipe connects to the end of a pipe manifold and loops back around to the beginning, connecting with the first pipe junction. This allows the fluid to split at the beginning and help fill the final machines in the manifold. It's also important to keep this side pipe at the same height as the main pipe, because you don't want your fluids to specifically prioritize this side pipe. This will help smooth out the sloshing enough to eliminate it as a problem, hopefully. Pre-fill machines. In a manifold system of non-fluid materials, it's often best to pre-fill machines. This gets around the downsides of a manifold system, which is the inconsistent startup times for each machine. However, with fluids, it's even more important, since as soon as the production machine gets fluid, it will start producing. To get around this, set the clock speed to the absolute minimum, which will start production just very, very slowly and allow each of the machines to fill up with fluids faster than they're used. Then, once you're done, put them back to normal. This can not only help kickstart a fluids factory, but can fix some problems that would come about from weird lead time demands from the machines and can help with that whole sloshing thing. Head lift. All right, things are about to get a little complicated, but bear with me, it's not as hard as it sounds. Head lift is basically the maximum vertical height that fluids in a pipe can travel to. Production and extraction machines produce 10 meters of head lift by default. So that means that fluids coming out of them can go up 10 meters before they need anything additional. For anything beyond 10 meters, you're going to need pumps, which produce 20 meters and 50 meters of head lift respectively. You do not need pumps for horizontal pipes as they do not increase the flow rate and adding them can potentially introduce new problems. So it's best to avoid. Also note that head lift from pumps doesn't stack, so two pumps right next to each other are just redundant. Pay attention to the little animated indicator when you're placing something. 
another pump in the way of that will reset it to that pump. The effect of gravity is also preserved in pipes. If you drop a pipe 20 meters, you don't need a pump to bring it back up to those 20 meters later on. Pumps also stack with gravity. To use the example from the satisfactory pipeline manual, if you have an 18 meter height and a 22 meter height with a valley in between and place the pump nine meters up on the first rise, you can actually move the water up 22 meters without having another pump. Between the 10 meter head lift from the water extractor and the 20 meter head lift from the pump, you're only using nine out of 20 meters from the pump to get the water to that 18 meter mark. Then it drops down 18 meters and attempts to rise 22 meters right after that. The effect of gravity means that water can reach those 18 meters with no problem, since it can always get back to its original height. And then it takes four more meters of head lift from the pump to take the water from that 18 meters all the way up to the 22 meters, thus using just 13 meters of the 20 potential head lift that the pump has in this entire scenario. Because of this logic, one popular hack is the water tower. Essentially, you wanna use pumps to send fluids as high as possible then turn the pipe around and send it back down. Now this entire pipe network can be brought back up as high as the topmost point of the water tower all without needing to add more pumps, which saves you on items and on power. The entire pipe network simply inherits the head lift from this system. But because pipes are weird, be sure to check your flow rate and see how your buildings are doing, because it's always possible that you need an extra pump even if it doesn't seem like you should. There's also a head lift exploit that can be taken advantage of that doesn't require any pumps at all. Build a fluid buffer at the highest point that you're gonna need, then start filling it with fluids. Then build a return pipe going down to enter your main pipe system. Add a valve to the end of the return pipe and set it to a flow rate of zero, essentially blocking it off. Once the return pipe and the fluid buffer are completely full of liquid, you can deconstruct the pipes that were filling that buffer so that it only has the output. Since fluids won't be able to flow out of the buffer thanks to the valve, it will remain full. And because of how this exploit works, the head lift generated by the downward pipe will apply to the entire pipe network, even though there isn't actually water flowing through it. And all of this without really using that segment of pipe or spending power on pumps. Valves. I've mentioned valves a couple times here and they're a bit odd. They seem incredibly useful, allowing you to prevent backflow and to limit a pipe to a certain value but many players report that valves don't do anything at all, and they don't actually solve the problems that you think they are. And most of the time, that's kind of true. They're not really needed. They may feel like they're solving a problem, but in fact, it's just kind of a placebo effect. However, other players say that they're critical in splitting the proper amount of a fluid off of a main pipe. And that is true. There are situations where you might want to use a valve, but it's not quite as common as you might think. However, there is one real reason to avoid valves, and that's because they are actually less precise than they let on. As explained on the wiki, the valves have a resolution of 8-bit minus 1, which refers to the fact that 8-bit goes between 0 and 255 values, so minus 1 gets you to 254. This means that the valves only have 255 potential values, 0 to 254, despite the fact that you can type any number between 0 and 600 into the field. To make this make a little more sense, let's do a simple visual. 0 through 254 are arrayed in a column, and each is multiplied by 2.3622, which is the result of 600 divided by 254. Essentially, that is the amount of notches on the dial that you can turn this thing to. The resulting 254 values of this multiplication are the only values that a valve can truly be set to, even though it's not what it says on the display. If you set the valve to a different number other than these, it will round up or down to the nearest valid value. This is a lot to have to deal with, and considering how precise fluids sometimes need to be, it might be worth avoiding valves as a flow rate limiter if it's going to be that important. In addition to that, valves can limit flow rate in undesirable ways by affecting the pressure of each pipe segment and preventing normal flow. If all you want to do is prevent backflow, consider using an unpowered pump as these will also lock the flow direction of pipes without introducing any additional issues. Using byproducts. There are plenty of recipes in Satisfactory that have liquid byproducts. In many cases, this byproduct is the same as an input product. The impulse then, of course, is to loop this output back into the input. This is less wasteful, but it does add a lot of complication. Because if the inputs back up at all, then so will the output. This means that the external input needs to be carefully limited with underclocking or valves. 
However, you also need enough to actually start the machine in the first place. Too much can go wrong, so if you want to make it easy on yourself, you can simply use a recipe that processes that fluid into a solid, then sink it, or you can feed it into another production line, which is the preferred method so that you're not being wasteful. If you want to learn more about this topic, uh, I'll put a card up in the top right that is a link to my byproducts video. Alright, so there are still plenty of little details that I could bring up about fluids in Satisfactory. There really are a lot of little tiny things about fluids, uh, but these are definitely the most important ones and hopefully this gets you started on fixing your factories if you're having a fluids problem. Let me know in the comments if there are any details that you think are valuable to add or if you learned something new from this video. Either way, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more guides like this one. See you in the next one.